ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Board to order. It is Tuesday, May 28th at 7.33 p.m. I'd first like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Present. Ben Kett Hoey. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Uh, Ms. Hoffman and Mr. Riccardelli are unable to join us this evening. Um, and then on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. Good to have you with us. Um, and then appearing for docket 3790 3840 Milton Street. Uh, we have representatives of, of 3840 Milton Street LLC. We do. Perfect. Thank you. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects. Signed into law on March 29, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. So with that, the first... <clears throat> The item number two on our agenda this evening is the uh, decision for 165 Franklin Street. So this was a um, decision on a special permit for a large addition that was uh, co-written by myself and Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for questions and comments, and the final version was posted this afternoon to the board. Are there any additional comments in regards to the uh, written decision for 165 Franklin Street? Seeing none, I will accept a motion to ex approve the written decision for 165 Franklin Street. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon, a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, so a roll call vote of the members who voted um, on the item at our last session. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Um, that written decision is approved. Approved, uh, which moves us to the item three on our agenda, which is the approval of thirty-six P, the decision for thirty-six Peabody Road. Uh, this was a decision that uh, was heard at our last session with a um, decision written by Adam LeBlanc, distributed to the board for questions and comments. And the final version was posted this morning to the board. Are there any additional comments in regards to the written decision for uh, thirty-six Peabody Road? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the written decision for 36 Peabody Road. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. The vote of those members present the last session, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And then Mr. Light, um, Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes. Aye. That is approved. That brings us to item four on our agenda. Approval of the decision for 70 Robbins Road. 
Uh, this was the case. It was heard at our last session. Um, the decision was written by myself, distributed to the board for questions and comments, and final decision posted to the board this afternoon. Are there any additional questions or comments in regards to the written decision for 70 Robbins Road? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the written decision for 70 Robbins Road. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Hanlon? Thank you, DuPont. Uh, so a vote of those members present. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Chair votes aye. That decision is approved. That brings us to item number five on our agenda, the approval of the decision for 57 Beacon Street. Uh, this was also heard at our last session, a uh, decision written by Mr. Handlin, distributed to the board for questions and comments, final revision posted this afternoon. Are there any additional questions or comments in regards to the written decision for 57 Beacon Street? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the written decision for 57 Beacon Street. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Handlin. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board. For those participating, Mr. Handlin. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. That brings us to the end of our administrative items and on to our hearings section. Um, <clears throat> here, I'm, I am going to take things out of order because the applicants for both 84 Hillside Avenue and for 49 Valentine Road have both requested continuances. Uh, so the we will just quickly vote on those continuances and then we will move on with uh, 3840 Milton Street. So uh, with that, um, we'll move on to item seven on our agenda, 84 Hillside Avenue. Uh, the applicants for 84 Hillside Avenue are working with uh, the director of inspectional services on trying to come up with um, possible solution to the issues they were having with the, the second driveway that had been uh, placed on their property. And so they have requested additional time and um, they are requesting a continuance if, with the board's approval to June 25th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, is that correct, Ms. Ralston? I believe it is. Fifth, twenty three, seven thirty. Okay, so with that, uh, the chair will accept the motion to continue the special permit hearing for four eighty four Hillside Avenue until Tuesday, June twenty fifth, two thousand twenty four at seven thirty p.m. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hamlin. Second. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. So vote of the board to continue the hearing for eighty four Hillside Avenue to June twenty fifth. Vote of members present, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Aye. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, we are continued on 84 Hillside Avenue. That brings us to item eight on our agenda, 49 Valentine Road. Um, the applicant has also requested a, uh, a continuance uh, to investigate options uh, for what they may do with uh, their, in their need for additional parking on their site. Um, so with that, um, the chair will accept a motion to continue special permit hearing for 30, uh, excuse me, for 49 Valentine Road until Tuesday, June 25th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you, Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. The chair votes aye. We are continued on 49 Valentine Road. That brings us back to item six on our agenda, which is docket 3790-3840 Milton Street. Um, ask that the applicant, and um, before we, <clears throat> sorry, one more, one more bit of verbiage. Uh, before opening for public hearings, here's ground rules for clear and effective uh, conduct of tonight's business. After I announce the agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce himself or themselves, make their presentation to the board, then request members of the board to ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of the public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. 
under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and reported at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, I would uh, ask Mr. Lyons to introduce himself and uh, tell us what changes uh, they have proposed since the last time we saw them. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having us again. Um, so uh, last meeting, we, we left with the notes that we needed to provide, provide two more bits of information, which was on the front of the house, the overhang that would be, um, that is provided on the plans that I sent in today. I don't know if you want to pull those up or not for everyone to see. But other than that, on the plot plan, we also had the stairs that were in the driveway, just the measurements of those with right. also um, the, the end line of the driveway and the parking layout. Provided. Okay, so these are the, the revised drawings that were submitted. Um, and what was questioned before? Was the, the second floor. The so here at the front of the building, there's a portion of the second floor that overlaps over the first floor. And by uh, over the staircase going into the first floor. Yeah. Correct. And by our zoning bylaw can't extend greater than one foot. And that dimension was omitted last time. So they have added the dimension here of one foot zero, Correct. which is here. Um, and then I don't believe there are any other changes to the plan. No. Uh, you requested that in the driveway. Yeah. yeah that is so. so this is just the remainder of the drawing set. Uh, this is the view on the front, so you can see where the overhang occurs is at this position here. Um, and this is the front porch that's currently enclosed at the second floor level, open at the first floor level, um, and has a roof that does not have a deck as of this time. Um, and then here on the side, this is the side facing the driveway. This is the stair uh, funk feature. This is new. Um, and this is the opposite side facing the the left side lot line, and then this is the rear elevation here. And then we just have uh, structurals. And then do you see the site plan? We do. Oh, good, that worked. Um, so what we have here, so this is the existing, uh, with the existing driveway, the garage that's been raised, but there's just the floor slab there now. Um, and then the existing dwelling, this is that, that porch at the front that's open on the first and closed on the second. And then here for the proposed, um, to refer to here as a two-story addition at the front, but I believe this is, you're just intending to enclose the existing porch on the first floor, is that correct? Correct, yeah, that's not a, a yeah, wrong verbiage to use, but. Okay. No worries. Um, and then uh, these are the, this is a proposed landing, which is five feet wide. And then the four parking spaces that are shown um, in this position. Is the intent for the driveway to end at the end of the parking spaces? Correct. Okay. And then are you changed? Is the, is the width of the new driveway going to be identical no, to the say, existing? It's or say the existing width. Okay. Is it moving closer to the sideline at all or? No? Nope. Nope. Okay. Right now, so whatever this a, a tree line, but it's, it's not going to uh, extend at all or, or even shorten. It's going to stay with the same. Okay. So whatever that right edge is of the driveway now is going to remain. Got it. Okay. That addresses, um, most of the questions we had, the so the only other question um, was about the, the end of the driveway, which we had just discussed. Um, uh, so we so the end of the driveway will be in this approximately in this position here. Correct. So it's actually going to shorten up a few feet because uh, currently it goes to the garage slab. Um, okay. Which is going to be, you know, the backyard afterward. Yep. And then at the front, I know the, the steps currently go towards the street. So that'll be taken out. The steps will go towards the driveway. Um, 
So I'm assuming that landscaping will infill where the steps used to be, and there will Correct. be a new walkway parallel to the driveway to the curb or to the sidewalk. Yep. Okay. Um, and then the landing has entrances for both the front unit and the rear unit. Yes. Okay. And as we had said, the garage is being is already removed um, from the rear of the. Property. Yeah, they, they it looks like they took down the structure and left the left the pad. Okay. Um, so this is this an open two story porch or a single story porch at the rear currently? Uh, that wasn't an open porch, um, but that's part of being uh, that's being enclosed as well. Right, but but currently, is it just a single story porch or is it two story? Double. It is double. Okay. Um, okay. Are there additional questions from the board, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Um, just in terms of the back porch, is that, that's, it looks to me like that's out of the the minimum rear yard, right? It's not, it's not a projection into a protected yard. Uh, it's 20% it's of 90 feet is less than 23 feet. So yes, it is outside the rear yard. Yeah, just so I know, I went, there's a comment in the in the um, memorandum from the building inspector from ISD about usable open space, and we may have done, dealt with this last time, but my memory is too short to remember how it was. But it could someone explain? I mean, just show me where it is and explain what he meant by saying it, it was a triangle and raising the issue whether we agreed with the ISD that that minimum open spaces can be measured in triangles what is that all about <laughs> I well, I, I did, not have not a, just... did not get further explanation from the building inspector so exactly how he was making that calculation um but i think what the board can do is the board can just say that it makes no determination in regards to the usable open space and then that just reverts the question to the inspector of the building inspector and he can make that determination right right i will point out that anything that you can say about a triangle you can probably say about a parallelogram you mm -hmm. just pull it at each of at the opposite corners and you can make it practically any shape and then half of it is a triangle so you know it the the problem in general is is bigger than triangles it's it's anything that doesn't we think of it as if it was a as if it was a square or rectangle but Mm -hmm. Any odd shape could produce some odd results, so it's something we may want to think about further. But I don't, I don't know that. We, as far as we're concerned, I mean, ISD is basically taking the view that it is what it is, and then unless somebody appeals that to us, I don't see that we have any reason to, any reason to uh, disagree with it. So, just, so this was that memo. Um, These are closer reports, which do not project into the rear setback. Inspectoral Services believes the large triangular area in the rear yard meets the usable open space requirement. While Inspectoral Services has used triangles for usable open space in the past, the applicant has been informed that the Zoning Board of Appeals will need to determine whether the open space requirement has been met. Oh, so he did put it on us. Okay. All right. All right. Are there other questions from the board on this application? I'll go ahead and stop share. <clears throat> I do not see any other questions from the board. So I will now be opening the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments will only be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. 
You'll be called upon by the chair. You will be asked to give your name and address, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all public, <clears throat> excuse me, questions and comments have been addressed, public comment period will be closed. Board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. So with that, are there any members of the public who wish to address this application, which is for 3840 Milton Street? Uh, yes, we have someone who is calling in. Um, if you could please uh, name an address for the record and uh, provide us with your comment. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I have a question on what I just heard relative to uh, the usable open space issue of a triangle. I'm having trouble following because unfortunately tonight I can only join you by a telephone, so I'm not getting the visuals. Um, as I remember, this is increasing the amount of driveway amount on the property and is therefore the ZBA determining that sufficient open space is maintained on the property? So uh, thank you for that question. So they are actually reducing the amount of driveway that will be on the property. Uh, currently, there's a garage that sits at the rear right corner of the property and the driveway that connects to that all the way to the front of the uh, to Milton Street. And so the applicant is proposing to cut that back uh, so that there's approximately uh, 40, 34 feet uh, from the end of the driveway to the rear lot line. Okay, so so Mr. Chair, they're increasing the amount of open space, which is uh, great news because that means less perme impermeable surface. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Are there any other members of the public who wish to address this application? Seeing none, I will go ahead and, cl oh, and uh, close the public comment period for this application. Um, <clears throat> so what the board has before us uh, is a request for a special permit under section 539D of the zoning bylaw. Um, I'm just going to quickly open up the zoning bylaw so I can read that in. So section 539D reads porches, decks, steps, and landings in the required setback are not considered to be within the foundation wall and may not be enclosed, extended, or built upon except by a special permit. And for the site we have in front of us, um, the existing rear porch, as we as we stated before, is is within the setback is not within the set required setbacks, and so therefore can be enclosed by right. Um, but the front porch um, is within the front required front yard setback, and therefore um, the first floor portion of it can only be enclosed uh, by a special permit. Uh, the second floor is all has been enclosed in the past, and so that can obviously remain. Um, and the addition of an open deck on top um, is not under our purview. It's just the enclosure of the deck at the first floor. Um, and the subsequent question, which the uh, building inspector had raised in regards to um, usable open space is actually a, an, an interesting question. Um, So I'm not entirely sure what his triangular methodology is for measuring um, usable open space. If we were, I think if we were to take a very strict interpretation that uh, which follows what the bylaw says that it has to be a minimum of 25 feet by 25 feet, uh, more than 75% open to the sky and um, uh, just cannot include things like driveways. Um, 
then the rear of the building, the question is, does the is there usable open space in the existing rear yard? So I'm gonna go back and share. So currently there's 23.4 feet from the edge of the porch to the rear lot line. Um, the, the portion between 23.4 feet and 25 feet would be under the porch above, so it would not be open to the sky, but that would be less than 25%. So the, the first question would be, does this have existing usable open space? Um, I believe, uh, let's navigate to the right page. So the existing uh, usable open space is listed as 59%. Uh, so they have usable open space currently. Um, they are now enclosing this porch, so they will no longer have 25 feet in this dimension. Um, however, they now gain this whole corner, uh, which is usable now. It, it's a little difficult to tell because uh, it's labeled as 22.9 back here. I believe it is wider back here, just looking at the drawing. Um, and so it it is very, so as long as there's, I think there's 25 feet between this corner and this side lot, then they would have usable open space here. Um, and would not need and would not need to rely on this area back here for usable open space. Um, I'm probably sure how we would. I was hoping we had the dimension here, but we don't. I guess the question would then be for the board, um, does the board feel comfortable um, with a condition saying that the determination of usable open space is up to the building inspector where the building inspector has specifically asked us to make this determination? Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. um, unless we are able to find that that applying the, the kind of square dimensions that we normally think of, that uh, uh, unless we're unable, I, mean, I would like to be able to find that. But if we don't have that, I don't see that we have a record that enables us to really address this question. The, the building inspector hasn't explained even what he does, much less why he does it. And it's hard on us to have to both make up what we think he might be doing and think, thinking about a good rationale for why he might do it. The, as, as we all know, the the bylaw itself is, tends to be a little difficult to understand sometimes. And um, I don't really, it's, it seems to me that, that in order for it seems to me that in order for us to address this question we need to have something more from the building inspector and if he wishes to make a determination and somebody wants to appeal it to us we can do that but to take take the situation the way it is all right now with as little as we know about what the practice is and how it relates to the to the ordinance um 
I think puts us in a very, very difficult position. I wouldn't, I would not be able to make an informed judgment on it on the basis of what I know right now, and uh, and I'm not sure that it's really necessary for the applicant to go over for some more time for us to 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 figure this out. Um, in the end, we may have to decide this, but I don't think that we should decide it in this case unless we. I don't think we should decide it in this case. Thank you. Other members of the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont? I was, I was looking for the memo, which I also have. So, um, so I, you know, I feel like this is a bit of a, you know, a shuttlecock, you know, back and forth with the uh, building department. But, you know, where where it says inspectional services believes that the large triangular area in the rear yard meets the usable open space requirement. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not sort of thinking of Mr. Hanlon's comments early on about, you know, trapezoid or parallelogram or whatever, you know, is, is that a an alternative finding that he would make? Whereas if we were to say, you know, that, you know, we give our approval to this subject to the, you know, the uh, applicant uh, confirming with the uh, building department that, uh, you know, that it meets uh, whatever the requirements are. Because again, like other people have observed, while inspectional services has used triangles for usable open space in the past, I guess the question is, you know, is that something that is ongoing and they're willing to do? Um, you know, I'm of a mind as I look at these sometimes to say that, you know, I get the 25 by 25 or 20 by 20, depending on the circumstances. And I think that, you know, on the other side of it, you have these other projections of open space which even though you know they may not be 25 by 25 sort of add to the overall and are we dealing with 30 percent of the gross floor area you know as the requirement and you know it seems to me unless i'm reading it wrong that this certainly exceeds that so i'm a little unclear as what we should do unless we just say oh okay well you know, we're good as long as inspectional services using whatever methodology they choose can, you know, can confirm that it meets whatever the requirements are. Because I, like others, I don't know exactly what this triangle methodology is. And I do think we need clarification, but I kind of hate to hold something up, you know, to have it go back and forth another round. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanlon. If I could... I mean, it, it it always is helpful to look at the statute because it it often says something a little different from what, what you always keep in your mind that it does. But the statute says open space shall determine usable only if at least 75% as a grade and so forth. And no horizontal dimension is less than 25 feet. So that's the language we have to interpret is what does it mean to say no horizontal dimension is less than 25 feet? Um, I don't know that that actually, that that isn't exactly the same as saying it has to be 25 feet by 25 feet because that transformation kind of assumes you've got right angles. And I don't really know what, what uh, how to interpret the idea of a horizontal dimension uh, in a situation where you have exotic shapes. Um, and so I'm just, you know, adding to this that that it isn't it isn't hundred percent clear what what the process is for, for evaluating uh whether the um whether the usable open the open space is usable or not, what what exactly that's supposed to mean. And uh, which is sort of another reason why I'd like to have a more developed record to uh, to get, get our to, to try to formulate our thoughts about that. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, Mr. DuPont. So one further thought. So, uh, you know, not to belabor the point, but so this this is all as a result of the rear porch being uh, enclosed effectively. Correct. So, you know, a, a possibility, and I'm not saying they should, but a possibility is that the applicant says, well, you know, in order to meet what we've got to meet, if we are using this 25 by 25 foot, uh, you know, method, uh, perhaps then the rear porch does not get enclosed. So I'm just throwing that out. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> the speaker on the screen, like, I think this is what he's talking about when he talks about the triangular method. Um, so what we have in the rear yard, what is being proposed is an area that is one dimension is 55 feet, one dimension is 34 feet, um, but there's a chunk out of it in the uh, where the house is. And so I think what the what the building inspector is getting at is that this because you can connect those two dimensions with a straight line that he considers that sufficiently contiguous that you would be able to count it as usable open space. Um, but I have to say, I am just sort of guessing what it might, be, might mean. Um, Mr. I, to yeah. just interject quickly. So in other words, we're saying that where we consider open space most of the time as some sort of, of a... Uh, a square or a rectangle, we're saying here that it doesn't necessarily mean if you're using the triangular method that you have to have four sides. You could have three sides as long as all three sides are going to exceed the 25 feet. Well, the the issue here is that this triangle is only like 950 square feet. It's not very big. So it doesn't meet the 30%. Um, I would have to run the numbers. <laughs> Um, so I sort of think for, for this case, I think we're, because we don't fully understand what the building inspector is asking, uh, is stating, and I apologize that I did not pursue this with him more thoroughly. I think we just need to, yeah. uh, provide a condition back, um, that the board understands that the the building inspector has a different and has a, a specific interpretation for how um, usable open space is to be calculated on sites such as this, and the board defers to his um, uh, to his judgment, and then we can um, then the basically we're we're giving the decision to make final determination of usable open space. We're giving that back to the building inspector, which as the zoning enforcement officer is is within his jurisdiction. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I'd be a little hesitant to go quite that far because obviously if this came up in a different context and it was appealed to us, we would have the final say. Made a mistake. Uh, and so it's not like it's within his exclusive jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, but it does seem to me that um, that we do not have a finding from the building inspector that this doesn't meet the usable open space requirements. Uh, if we did have that kind of a finding, we'd have a wholly different issue in the case. So as far as I can see, the building inspector has really basically said, as far as he's concerned, this is okay. But uh, if we had a different view, we could do it. And at this point, I would just sort of refrain from taking action and just say, we don't, this doesn't seem to be presented to us. The, there's been no clear determination by the building inspector that this doesn't have the open space. Uh, and if the issue is presented to us in an appropriate way, we would address it. But at this point, uh, it is not an issue in this case. Okay. So then I was going to go ahead and share. This is the uh, the Google Street View. This is the existing condition of the house. Um, the the set that's provided doesn't have existing plans. Um, 
but this shows the front of the building. So there's an existing uh, dorm box dormer here on the front of the house, a uh, little box bay window um, that will be removed. Yeah. Um, is that correct, Mr. Lyons, that that's going to be removed? Yeah, that's yeah. where your doorway is going to be there. Okay. Um, and then we have the existing two-story porch that's open at the ground floor level and open, and excuse me, open at the ground floor level and enclosed at the second floor level. Right. And so the the section of the bylaw that we're reviewing here is this question about enclosing uh, this lower in the front section, on the front, correct. And the back back, as we said, is is immaterial and uh, the, no there's no questions about. Um, usable open space except as uh was presented um as the question from the building inspector according to my surveyor open in he I, I think the world of him and he claims he mm -hmm. knows everything in Arlington because he works in Arlington all the time he claims that open space is a, a square 25 by 25 when I brought the triangle thing to him he really was kind of baffled and didn't know what I was saying um it is my it is my understanding that there's no open space no open space meaning 25 by 25 mm -hmm. presently and and that there won't be any 25 25 open space in the future however there's more open space with us doing it yeah in the future than there is existing does, does that help you it does it does the application does list that might be a typo. That might be a typo. Okay. And I will, I will, the building inspector, he, he, he's great, but I, I will, mm -hmm. I will, believe me, I will make a point to go see him yeah. and tell him your concerns. Okay. So the existing front of the house, as we said, this box storm will be removed. The uh, second floor and the portion up to the, uh, the peak will be moved forward. The front wall will be moving forward by 12 inches. And then uh, these will be enclosed. There'll be a door added up here uh, to access what will be a new deck um, up here at the attic floor level. Um, go ahead and I'll stop that share. <clears throat> so we said this is a request for special permit under section 539D of the zoning bylaw. Um, and where it is a special permit, it's subject to the special permit requirements that are under section 333 of our zoning bylaw um, and ultimately under state law. Um, the board is required to make a series of findings. Um, in regards to this special permit. So these questions relate specifically to the enclosure um, of the lower section of the existing porch. Um, that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Uh, that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district, um, which would it would be the use of a, as the two family is allowed, uh, the enclosure is allowed, um, under with a determination of a special permit um <clears throat> requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare um so this is something that we had discussed actually at our last session in regards to the property on robbins road where there was an a proposed enclosure of an existing open porch at that on that case it was specifically a single story porch that was being partly enclosed. Um, here it's a two-story where the upper story is already enclosed. And just wanted to ask the board if there were any concerns um, what, in regards to what will be enclosing the lower portion of the porch uh, to become, I believe, a portion of uh, the kitchen. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hamill. Oh, Mr. Hamill. Hey, Mr. Hamill. Hanlon, excuse me. I'm not throwing away my shot. Um, <laughs> the, I mean, as the board knows, I've got a lot of concerns about the way in which things are going in terms of, of uh, enclosures of porches. 
Um, and I will say that, in my view at least, in general, uh, when we ask what, about whether the adverse effects of enclosing porches uh, counterbalances the benefit to the public or the applicant or both, um, that in general, using the enclosure of porches to extend the living space of a house into a protected front yard is an adverse effect. We, we can excuse that if we think it's outweighed by other things. But it's not as if there's nothing on this side of, on the adverse effect side of the ledger. Um, and so it seems to me that we, that while that isn't fully addressed or specifically addressed in all of the subparts of, of section 3.3.3, .3, it is addressed in the ultimate finding that we're supposed to be able to make. Uh, so for me, there has to be something on the plus side of the legislature to counterbalance the essentially the undermining of the front yard. It's one thing to I mean it's one thing to put a porch out there, which is not a room of a house. It's not part of the building exactly. Uh, it's a as the the as the uh, uh, bylaw calls it. It's a projection into the front yard. And once you've enclosed it and made it part of and put the kitchen or the living room or, or rather right out in there, that's not really a projection into it for the front yard. That's just moving the house out. And that, it seems to me, always has the capability, if it's widely done, of undermining the uh, validity of the, uh, the importance of the setback requirements. And doing that, it seems to me, is something that we should be very reluctant and cautious about doing. Here... I'm not, I mean, in, in part because I didn't didn't do very well with this argument in the last case. Uh, I'm a little bit unsure here. It uh, certainly the, the some aspects of of, of a porchy of, of an expression into the an extension into the front yard are left. Uh, it is it does undermine the notion that. I mean, having the enclosed porch on the top uh, kind of makes it seem more arbitrary that you can't, that you wouldn't be able to do it in the, on the first floor. Um, and it may be that all those things together are enough to give this case a pass. But I would really implore the rest of us to to think hard about uh, the way in which the, in which if you don't take into account the undermining of the setback rules. Uh, that suddenly this special exception is swallowing them up and it becomes very easy. If uh, you can build a porch, then you can come back later and you can extend your house. And event I'm not comfortable with that. I don't think that's what town meeting meant when it did what it did. Uh, and I don't think that it is, in, it is required by the language that they took. Uh, but it, it, we need to think hard about about just where we think this is going, because otherwise, there, otherwise we're going to approve them all. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mr. Lyons. Does the existing porch go all the way to the side of the house, or does it stop short in the front? On the front. In the front, no, it does. It's not well, as, as you see it, doesn't it? Oh, well, if you're facing the house on the left, it goes to the edge, yeah. But then it goes about halfway, as you before that bay window that you pointed out earlier. But on the left, so you're saying on the left hand side, it already aligns with the the side wall of the building. I believe so. Yeah, I believe that there's like a, an inch or two, but it's essentially there. Okay. Unfortunately, the pictures on on Google don't show that side of the house. The one thing we had discussed with the project on Robbins was the the question of making of having it look sort of maintain the appearance of an enclosed porch rather than just being um, subsumed into the house. Um, and in that case, uh, we had asked them uh, to consider how they applied the trim um, to the house in such a way that you still could sort of 
rather than just read it as being entirely within the house, that it still reads as a, a separate piece. Um, we're, we're very open to that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially, you just don't want vinyl slapped on. That's which we, we plan on doing something jazzing it up a bit anyways. Mm -hmm. Pulling up the decision that we just voted on, Robbins, to see what language we had used. Well, the, the language of the condition, Mr. Chairman, if I, I do remember that it was something that we kind of that I actually came up with on the fly and it refers to the discussion in that particular hearing, which yeah. it was much more extensive than what we've had here. So I'm not sure that it's suitable as a model at this point. Oh, OK. So moving on to the next question, um, will the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety? Um, essentially, the driveway and the corner of the house adjacent to the driveway remain as is and would not uh, increase the amount of traffic using the building and would not impair the sight lines uh, from the driveway to the street. Uh, requested use will not overload any public system. Uh, so that it's an existing two-family house being reused as a two-family house would not um, dramatically increase the use of any utilities or uh, systems, uh, public systems. Um, the special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. That special regulation is this 539D, the question of enclosing the porch. Um, why the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, why the requested use will not be a detriment to the public health or welfare. And why the requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighbor. Um, so the, that last one, you know, it's a two family, it, it will remain a two family. So there's not sort of a creation of additional or uh, a use that may be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, but I would like to sort of ask these questions for um, for the board, how they sort of feel about um, the, the question of enclosing this porch and whether that has any thing which gives you pause in regards to uh, the questions about the character or integrity of the neighborhood or whether it is essential or desirable to the public convenience and whether the proposed use, uh, the adverse effects will not outweigh the beneficial impacts. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Let me just raise one thing as I've been thinking about this. One of the factors that seems to me to be relevant is that if I'm right in thinking that there's a danger that freely closing in porches undermines the integrity of the front setback requirement, um, I would then say, well, what what does the block already have? If mm -hmm. I mean, if this is East Arlington. It could be that that much of that the setback requirement is just a mathematical puzzle and not not effective at all. And therefore, the that concern uh, would be of substantially less weight. Uh, it might be quite different if you were dealing with a neighborhood or the street happens to be one where people largely are complying with it. And so, uh, you know, opening up a precedent for undermining it, uh, it would have a bigger negative impact. I actually am not Sure, in my own mind, I, mean, I I haven't looked at this block and at this area uh, with that thought in mind, so I haven't, I don't have a considered view of it. Um, but I'm sure the rest of you may have. May, that may very well have, when you visited the site, uh, struck on your your minds. But that would at least be a, a factor that would mitigate the impact of uh, of undermining the setback requirement. 
So there are a couple up towards Mass Ave where the front porches have been completely enclosed. Um, it does seem like the predominant pattern on it, at least on that street, is for the open porch below and the enclosed porch above. Um, but there are absolutely example. There are a few examples um, getting closer to Massachusetts Avenue, where, uh, and also at the other end of the street, um, where the porches have been in fully enclosed. But it appears in, in most of those cases, it does appear that they still sort of maintain their porch-like appearance rather than being incorporated into the volume of the building. Mr. Chairman, I, th I think that that should be sort of a minimum. Mm -hmm. At the very least, it shouldn't look as if the house had been was built in the south back from the beginning. Yeah. So assuming that our concerns are related solely to the question of having it appear as an enclosed porch rather than incorporated within the house, if we feel that if we can address that question, um, then we could move ahead. How would we want to... Condition that. What are the aspects of it being porch like that we would want to request? Um, so, this is the way the house looks today. Uh, so, there's four windows facing the street, there's two windows on the side. I assume there's two windows on the side opposite. Um, the proposal is to have um, so the drawings. So to have two windows on the front, um, effectively no window on the side. Um, because the window sort of straddles where the edge of the existing. That's wall. the rear of the house. Oh, this, this is the rear. Beg your pardon. Um, is there on this surface here at the front? Are there any windows on this side? Uh, could you scroll down a bit? Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's currently showing no. Okay. Yeah. So there's no window on the side. Uh, on the left hand side, it doesn't appear that there's a right hand side out of there's a closet here on the second floor to preclude a window. And a pantry and a coat closet here that would preclude a window on this side. So if the concern was about openness, um, then we could make a request about the required openness in order for this to be uh, considered for enclosure. Obviously, the upstairs is already enclosed. Um, Mr. Chairman? I think that that actually is a fairly good approach in this circumstance. Again, 
the the notion I have in my mind is that the enclosed porch has to continue to be viewed as a projection into the protected minimum yard rather than the extension of the house itself into the minimum part of the yard and maintaining a certain degree of openness by the fenestration um, seems to me to be in this particular circumstance where you already have a closed in porch on the second floor uh, mm -hmm. that, that would seem to be one of the things that you could do to do that. Mr. Mr. Lyons actually had some other ideas that he was thought about when the chair first brought it up. And maybe he could give us some ideas too as to what it is that he might um, that he might do to achieve this. But openness uh, does seem to be at least a part of the consideration. I'm just jotting down Mr. Hanlon's words here because it forms a good basis for a condition. Mr. LeBlanc and Mr. Holly, if they have any sort of suggestions on how we might address this question. Um, I've been just kind of looking at it and just seeing if you could make something, even if you didn't have, you know, even if you didn't have to enclose it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like it could still be a workable floor plan if you didn't enclose the first floor portion and just kept the second floor portion to sort of mimic what the existing condition is. Um, my other thought with this is um, in some regard, they are improving the front setback with this. It is not as deep um, mm -hmm. than the existing condition. So I think to some degree that's an improvement. Um, and I do agree with Mr. Hanlon in, in terms of um, the whole, this whole larger issue that I think maybe we have to uh, think about. Um, and it's a really good point and something that I didn't really um, think of when we, you know, we started started on this one. Um, so I think we do kind of have to revisit that. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Holly, Mr. Holly, should go. Um, is the question for the applicant is is the current existing kitchen where it, where the proposed is, and um, I was just trying to understand on the same lines as what Mr. LeBlanc was looking at it is that the portion is is the new kitchen dictating um, the first floor to be enclosed more enclosed. And is the pantry and coat closet uh, is, is what is dictating? You know, it, obviously we prefer openness, more openness, and and maybe enlarging the living dining further down is still within you know within the extents of the building and doesn't trigger any of this. So, is there something that could be done within the footprint and the plan itself uh, that creates the openness of the porch and doesn't feel more enclosed is a thought no the uh kitchens are not in the or these are proposed kitchens that are do not match the existing and it's like that because this is what this is what people like this is what the, the new the new people want to move in and live in something beautiful and that's what this is i don't know of any and maybe you know more than me, but I know don't know of anybody that uses that uses their front porch. 
They walk on it and they walk in the house and that's it. They, 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 these people, the peep, the, the new, the new wave of people, the younger generation want nice places. And this is a nice place. And we increase the open space. As far as I'm concerned, we checked all the boxes, guys. And Mr. Lyons, you had said that on the left-hand side, the front porch as it's built today is not offset from the line of the house. Correct. Okay. And the building department has had this, these plans for quite a while. As a matter of fact, multiple inspectors because it's, it's, I'm not. I'm not trying to th put throw anybody under the bus, but it can be like a revolving door down there, with the inspectors coming and going. Once I get to learn their name, I'm not. They're gone. Mr. Chair, I um, have an image on maps. You know, it shows a bit of reveal there, setback of, mm -hmm. uh, of the main building. I can share my screen if um, if that's something you want to see. I know yeah. you mentioned Pauline, that. Did you show that? Colleen, could you give and get that permission? I'll go ahead and stop my share. My question is, would that help? Um, so this is actually the neighboring house. Oh, this is the neighboring house? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So it's, it's the house on the other uh, side. It's that house there yeah. on the left. Uh, and unfortunately, every single view. view yeah, it jumps. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I thought when I clicked back and this, it showed me this. Sorry. You're right. That no. the other house is. But well, you can see here, like this blue house on the left. Oh, that that you saw previously like that's a fully enclosed front porch yep um right sorry i'll stop the screen share now <laughs> mr chairman yes sir okay. i have i mean you probably you were doing language also uh but i've got not perfect language, but something that might might make a livable way of getting beyond the issue. Okay. Uh, if I knew how to share my screen, I would, but I don't actually know how to do that, uh, or at least without taking up the next 10 minutes of the board's time. <laughs> um, but the idea I had is to say the applicant will use suitable design elements, including fenestration that preserves an open appearance to preserve the appearance of the enclosed porch as a projection into the minimum yard and not an extension of the house itself. Okay. And then that would leave the determination of that to the building inspector. Yes, that would, and I, I understand it may be a little bit goose, a little bit looser than he, he normally likes, but it's. I mean, we're at a situation here where being really precise and saying these many windows with this U value or whatever is going to do the trick. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the applicant can, if he could use language like this to at least attempt to. Well, use language like this to achieve something that so, that suits his objective objectives, and at the same time uh, uh, accommodates our concern. Then that would be a win all around. We we aren't going to resolve this issue in this case. So right. figuring out a way to get on to the next case is important. It is important, however, what the applicant just told us that this is what people want. Because right. we, we've got this issue in two consecutive cases, 
and you know that if that's what the people want, we're going to have it again. And either, and we need to think proactively, you know, in terms of the larger issue, just what what we want to do about it or what we can do about it, or at the end, maybe what we want town meeting to consider doing about it. it this may be just too hard for us. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So, um, I, you know, I'm really listening uh, very attentively to the comments of my fellow board members. And, uh, you know, every time I think I understand a provision of the zoning bylaw, then I listen to other analysis and realize that, oops, uh, you know, there's more to it sometimes than meets the eye. And so, and I, I think one of, and I'm not asking or suggesting that this be held up because I actually think that you know, the ideas that have been put forth by you and by Mr. Hanlon about, you know, fenestration to retain sort of the appearance of a porch can work. The only thing that sort of pops up in my sort of analysis is when you look at the bylaw, the section 5.3.9D, and it says, um, you know, porches, deck steps, and landings um, not within the foundation wall may not be enclosed, extended, or built upon except by special permit. And I realize that there is a sentence or two missing from there because the question I think that it begs is, is that uh, intended to uh, imply uh, that the continued use, once they are extended, are as porches, deck steps, and landings? So that really what you're doing is you're just making what's there larger, but it retains its character. And so, I, and I don't know the answer to that, but I do think that the discussion sort of brings that up as far as, well, you know, are we suggesting that people can, uh, you know, they can enclose it and then, but they're going to be limited in terms of what they can do within that space. And I'm not sure that it says that, but it doesn't also say that you can use it for whatever else. And I, I do think that a sort of a halfway point is this idea of retaining the view, look as a porch, but I'm not sure that that's a long-term approach that we should take. Maybe we do need to look at that more carefully mm -hmm. and get some sort of a determination or what have you. Anyway. No, well, thank you for that. All right. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, not to like kind of beat this to death here a little bit, but <laughs> I was just looking at the, the GIS map for the neighborhood and looking at the subject property, the um, property itself is actually set back a little bit further than the rest of its street. So mm -hmm. with the, with this front enclosure, it actually helps bring it in line with the rest of its neighbors a little bit more. So I don't think it adds that much detriment to the rest of the neighborhood uh, in terms of, of that, just kind of general massing in alignment with others, neighbors. Okay. So just like a little observation on that. No, thank you. That's very helpful. <laughs> okay. So we do need to bring this to a conclusion. Um, so there are a couple of, but I think overall on the um, on the question of usable open space, um, Mr. Hanlon, I don't remember if you had specific language that you had put forward. You had stated it rather well before i'll never i'll never be able to recover it <laughs> maybe the zba makes no determination in regards to the proper application of the, the minimal dimension, the minimum dimension, minimum. Minimum horizontal dimension is the way it says in the... Thank you. Horizontal dimension.
DBA makes no determination in regards to the proper application of the minimum horizontal dimension requirement. For usable open space. Mr. Chair. Mr. Holly. This is more a question than any, you know, uh, my own question on this topic of open space. Um, on the existing plot plan, the open yeah. porch was relative to the outside corner of the building has set, is set back by, I, I don't know, I can't tell, maybe a couple of, a, a, foot, a foot or so. Mm -hmm. That, is that, gives us gives the proposed exist you know condition the openness requirement i mean minus the garage right um and because the enclosed portion is now flush with the outside corner the dimension is not being compliant right i mean certainly if they maintained the dimensions i think of the existing open porch then they would clearly have a 25 by 25 in that back corner Right at the corner, yeah. Even by a few inches, right? Yeah. Uh, right. And, and this whole thing could go away in a way. Uh, I don't know what that means to the floor <laughs> plan. I just, you know, thought. Right. I mean, it's just, it's open area within the dining room on the first floor. And it's a corner of a bedroom in the on the second floor. Right. Mr. Chairman. Yes. It's interesting to note that in reality, and not necessarily in terms of the legal thing, but if you look at where they have now and forget about triangles, they actually have more open space than they did before because of the the garages come down. And yep. uh, so they have something that has a horizontal dimension of 55 feet, but now the other horizontal dimension, if you treat it as a rectangle, is only, is only 23 feet. Uh, and, uh, I mean, this is... We've always known that this is a concept that has its many ironies in it, but that would be one here. Absolutely. So, uh, so Sir, sorry. We were... yeah, yeah. Well, one, I think when the only caveat to what Mr. Hanlon was saying is that because it was open porch on the left side, we met the 25 by 25 in the existing condition, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, because the open porch yeah. should Was, qualify as usable open space. So Correct. we're not dealing with a zero to a greater degree of zero. Right. It, when... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're not, it's not non confirming to begin with. So I was going to propose a condition that the ZBA makes um, no determination in regards to the proper application of the minimum horizontal dimension requirement for usable open space and leaves the determination to the building inspector. Or I should say it's to the zoning enforcement officer. Mr. Chairman, we, we define the building inspector, in our opinions, to be the head of, I, of IDA. Or is oh, we do. It, okay. Then we can leave it as ISDA. it was. Yeah. Okay. So that would address the question of usable open space. Um, Uh, as we had done on the Robbins Road case, I would want to sort of address the question of um, where the front wall of the house is now, and that the front wall of the house is not at the front of the enclosed porch. It's, it remains at the front of the existing building. Um, 
And so what we had said before, so the exist the area of the enclosed porch shall not be considered within the foundation wall of the building. And the open front deck shall not be enclosed. So basically that the, the definition for front wall of the house is at the front of the foundation wall. So it would leave the front foundation wall where it is today. And we would just be saying that that open deck at the front is not to be enclosed in the future. Or I should say, should not be enclosed without an action from the board. And then we have um, the condition that Mr. Hanlon had put forward, which I don't have in writing. But I do. What do you do? I do. Uh, what I read to you, let me, let me just see if I can, if somebody can give me a permission to share the screen, I might be able to get it up and then you can just look at it. So I just hit this to see whether that will work. Here it so is. Also needs to give you permission to share. Well, it's, I got it anyway. At least as you're starting to screen share. Yeah. As co-host, you can share. Uh, see. Okay. Uh, let me just make that bigger. Is that legible? Absolutely. Do we do we feel that's sufficiently clear that the building inspector can interpret that? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, do we want to specifically say that it's the first floor porch or the first floor area, right? Because that's really what we're mm -hmm. kind of discussing, that the second floor is okay kind of as as designed because it already is an enclosed porch or enclosed area. How about... I think that helps. Yeah, I think that just helps give a little bit more specificity for the. And then on the on the third line, um, I would recommend removing everything from that to the comma. Because it basically says the same thing twice in a row. The penetration. So eliminating the so remove that preserves an open appearance. Yep. And remove that as well. Okay. So, so I wonder if the applicant can live with this language. Is this is this something that is within the scope of what he believes he can do and achieve his objectives? Mr. Lyons? Can no, you hear me? Yeah. No, we can know. now, yes. To be honest with you, you lost me a half an hour ago. <laughs> I, I You're going round and round in circles. One minute, I thought you you were saying that it's up to the building department, the it's building inspector. The next minute, I think you're telling me to make it and close it, but make it look like a porch. At the next minute, I think you're telling me to not do anything. Please tell me what you want me to do. No. 
So what we're saying here is that for when you enclose the front porch at the first floor level, yep. we want it to not look as much like it's just part of the house, but we want it okay. to still sort of read that you have this front porch structure on the front of the house. No yeah. problem. Okay. We'll do something. Yep. We'll make, we'll make it look so nice you'll want to move in. There you go. Yeah, I can do that. All right. So those are I could even put a if you if you'd let me, I could even put a little porch coming out towards the sidewalk, but that would just defeat the purpose. No, exactly. Exactly. No, having the having the port the entry porch off on the side is great. Okay. That or that oh, that entry deck. Okay. So we have those three proposed conditions, and then we have the three standard conditions that the board applies to all its decisions. Um, number one is the plant specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Uh, number two, that the building inspector is hereby notified there to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary. The building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And number three, that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. Um, and then we have the three um, additional ones. The one that Mr. Hamlin, Hamlin has, we will refer to as number four. Um, uh, the one that about the enclosed porch not being considered within the foundation wall should be number five. And the one about the um, open space shall be referred to as number six. Are there any additional questions from the board? Um, do we have a sufficient record on the findings? Um, so the the first of the adverse effects the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, so the benefit that this would have to the general public is that it provides an amenity uh, that's been identified by the applicant as something that uh, residents are requesting um, in the use of their property, you know, that they prefer to have the enclosed space rather than um, rather than the, the open space in the front yard. Um, and it helps to uh, uh, promote the, the orderly expansion of property within town. Um, the, the use is allowed or allowed by special permit uh, that we've already addressed, that the requested use is essential or desirable to public convenience or welfare. Um, just sort of address that priorly that the um, that the the use of um, that additional habitable space um, is an amenity that um, is uh, desired by the general public, um, and that its use in this application would um, would further that aim. Um, we already addressed traffic congestion. We already addressed public systems. Uh, we already addressed uh, uh, special regulations. Uh, the request of use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, there are other examples of enclosed porches um, in this district, as was noted by Mr. LeBlanc. The, this house is already slightly back from other houses. And so um, enclosing the, the, the front porch and bringing the perceivable front line of the structure farther forward um, is not as pronounced as it might be in other areas. 
um, and that by by the conditions imposed, um, the character of the front porch as being an enclosed front porch um, is to be maintained. Uh, requested use will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, that there's, there's nothing about this that would cause injury uh, to public health or welfare and that will not cause an excess of detrimental use. Uh, so those are the findings that the board would need to apply. Um, Uh, we have anything else? And the only other um, uh, condition that I wanted to include uh, was based on the sort of conversation at the beginning, uh, which was just that the the right edge of the 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 right edge of the excuse me the edge of the driveway closest to the property line uh, shall not be moved closer to the property line. Closest to the lot line, the side lot line. So not be moved closer to the lot line. And then they uh, back edge of the driveway. Will not exceed the extent of the parking spaces shown on the plot plan, the site plan, what are we referring to this as? Plot plan. So the side of the driveway closest to the side lot line shall not be moved closer to the lot line. The back edge of the driveway shall not exceed the extent of the proposed of the proposed parking spaces as shown on the plot plan. Just because we don't have those actual lines drawn on the plan, so we just wanted to include those for our discussion. Are there any other questions in regards to this application from the board? And if not, then I will go ahead and ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the board uh, approve the application uh, subject to the seven conditions that have been read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So this is a vote of the board to approve the special permit application for 3840 Milton Street um, with the seven conditions, the three standard plus the four additional that are in the record. Uh, roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That special permit is approved. Right. Thank you, Mr. Lyons, and thank you to your team. Um, so we will, in two weeks, when the board meets again, we will uh, vote on the final uh, uh, written decision. And then at that point, um, we can move forward with the building department. Okay. Um, just out of for clarification, once you guys vote in two weeks and uh, say the approved is finalized. Yep. You guys mail me the letter and then I go file it in Cambridge, correct? Uh, yeah, the, the building department would mail it, yes. 
Gotcha. Okay. And in the meantime, can I proceed at my own risk? Uh, I think that's between you and the building inspector. Gotcha. I will check with him Monday. Okay. Or tomorrow. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. Guys. Okay. So that is the end of our items on our agenda for this evening. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Holly? Oh, Mr. Hanlon was still sharing the screen. I don't know if he had. Oh, sorry. Go on now. Um, no. Oh. Time. Okay. Uh, so the next meeting of the board would be Tuesday, June eleventh at seven thirty p.m. Uh, Ms. Ralston, what do we have on the agenda for the eleventh of June? So right now we have the two. Uh, nothing for the eleventh at all. Okay. Um. We do have the two that we continued from today. And right yeah. now I have four new ones that would have to be processed by the end of this week. Um, two of them I don't think need to be here. So hopefully it'll just be two more. And that would be for the 25th? Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, so June 11th. Um, be lovely to have a night off, except now we do have a decision we need to vote on. Uh, so we will meet very briefly on the 11th, uh, basically to conduct that one piece of business, and then we'll uh, be off again until the 25th. Mr. Chairman, we might be able to do that in France if Ms. Hoffman is still there. True. There. Anything else? Uh -uh. Um, do believe that uh, Mr. Moore has his hand up from the. I was just going to say that. <laughs> from the phone. Yes. Uh, may I speak, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, sir. It's not relative to any case. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, say that I was getting all ready to offer my compliments to the chair for running a, an expeditious and, and very efficient <laughs> meeting, the clip that you guys were going at earlier. And um, I withdraw that potential comment, but I want to say instead, as a member of the general public to which you lovingly referred to earlier, I want to uh, say how much I appreciate the board uh, trying to carry out the spirit of what town meeting voted rather than just the letter of the law. This was this sounded like a pretty complicated little glitch. And I, I must say, I wanted to uh, tell Mr. Hanlon, I sure appreciated uh, his views of the overuse of porch expansions potentially, and, uh, and how you guys are always so careful about setting a precedent. So uh, once again, I just want to compliment the board on its actions tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Much appreciated. And I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. Especially like to thank uh, Colleen Ralston and Mike Champa for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank Second. You. Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, Have a good night, Thank everyone. Much. Have, Have a good night. night. Good night. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.